I kept getting messages asking me to check out this game called Crucible. Now, I'll be honest, I've heard nothing about this game, but decided to check it out. It's Amazon's first big budget game, so I wasn't really expecting anything spectacular. As I was downloading it, I browsed through the reviews on Steam. My expectations dropped even lower. Fast forward, I've got 42 hours under my ever-tightening belt, and I've got this to say. This game... It's actually kind of fun, but holy shit, is there some issues with it? I mean, how do you not even have a way to chat with your party? I mean, what the fuck? Okay, so before doing this video, I did a little research about the game, like any other professional YouTuber, and came across a video that Amazon posted about this game in 2016. Take a look at it. This was the last one standing third person shooter in which 12 hunters enter an alien hostile world, but only one emerges victorious. Because the world itself is dangerous, players have to work together. But unlike a lot of team games, players can actually make or break alliances on the fly. So you have to kind of watch your back. Crucible also has a new type of player, a 13th player, who can broadcast and also directly impact the game by creating events. And it's not just a one-way streak. Viewers can actually interact with the Game Master as well. A 13th player as an observer. Does that sound like another game I've heard of? Darwin Project? We'll see how that game's doing. <laughs> Apparently having an observer who can screw with whoever they want wasn't a good idea. Who would have thunk it? Anyway, let's break down this new version of Crucible for anyone that's just completely lost right now. Crucible is a free-to-play team-based PvP action shooter. That's quite big. There's currently three modes you can play. One is like a battle royale. You can duo or go in solo and group up with another random solo member. You trust people online? Nah, I'm good. The map is too small for this and everywhere is just cluttered nonsense. Not worth it. You've got an arcade 8v8 mode, which essentially just has you take over control points and having more control points equals more points and the first one to get to X amount of points wins. 8v8, again, too hectic. Then you have the main mode, Heart of the Hives, which is a 4v4 and we'll focus on this one because it seems like this is the main mode they want you to play. You choose a hunter that looks the coolest. Customize the talent tree by choosing each talent that has the words more and damage in it and slam that play button. Once you drop in, you'll see five different points you can capture. These are the harvesters, and capturing them will grant you an additional 30 essence every 10 seconds. What are essence? Let's just refer to it as XP from now on. So XP is shared team-wide. So think of your level more as like your team's level. Now the higher level you are, the more talents you have unlocked, along with having higher health and damage. And the other big objective is the hives. There are these yellow markers on the map, and they'll spawn in and give you about like five minutes for you to actually interact with them. So it gives you time to set up. Now once that timer is up, someone will need to destroy it and capture the heart that it drops. If you capture three of these hearts for your team, you win. And that's the bare bones of the game. Of course, there's more aspects to the game, but let me sum up the important parts, or at least what I find important, and a few tips to kind of get you started if you're interested in playing it. There are med kits to spawn around the map. You can click G to use them to heal. Always try to have some on you so you can heal in the middle of a fight. But keep in mind, if you take any direct damage while you're healing, it'll cancel your med kit usage. At each harvester location, there's a healing station. Use these to heal out of combat. There's also plants scattered around the map that do an assortment of things. The green will heal you, the yellow will make you invisible for a few seconds, there's some on the wall that spew out goo, and there's one that actually explodes causing spikes that can kind of cut off entry points if you're trying to run away. There's also monsters spread throughout the map, and you can kill them to get additional essence, or XP, damn it. Getting a little bit more specific, in every game random events will occur. While you're loading in, pay attention because you're going to see which events are going to happen. These events can range from anything of like extra healing, damage, etc. And they're usually different objectives you have to capture. Oh, and I'd highly suggest that you go through the talent trees in the main menu before actually queuing up to a game. There is a short a lot of time that you can tweak your talents once you find the match, and this kind of allows you to cater it to more synergize with your team comp that you have or to counter the enemy's team comp. But having your talent tree generally how you want it before you've been jumping into the game makes that process much less hectic. And as for general gameplay, just try to stick with at least one person, strive to maintain at least three harvesters at all times, and always be ready for a big team fight when the hive becomes killable. And bam, that's it. That's Crucible. So you may be wondering, is this game good? Is it fun? Yeah, I'm actually enjoying it. This game's got some good aspects, but it also has some things it could improve on. Let's start off with the good things. The Hunters. I've gone through and played a few games on each Hunter. While I may have some that I prefer over the others, I can at least see how somebody out there would like at least one of these Hunters. Most of them have a genuinely unique kit. I personally fell in love with Susan, or I guess Suzanne or whatever. Her abilities is just to simply switch between a rifle, a shotgun, and a throwing knife. And the only way you can ever reload 
any of these guns is to swap to one other one. So you're constantly swapping your guns, giving you this feeling like you're always doing something, which is fun to me. And hitting long range knives are just ugh, the best feeling in the world. Combat. So the actual combat of this game is kind of a shining point for me. It's hard to really point out what exactly I like about it, but I think a lot of it has to do with the time to kill. And time to kill is, well, exactly what it sounds like. It's the amount of time someone takes on average to kill another opponent. In a pool of games like Call of Duty, CSGO, Valorant, Overwatch, Paladins? It's nice to have fights that aren't over in under two seconds. Now, of course, I've had a lot of conversations in the past with people discussing low TTK or time to kill versus high TTK. And I've always been a big fan of higher TTK. Longer fights means more counterplay, more decision making, and it just gets your heart pumping that much longer on those prolonged fights. Sadly, that's it for the good things. It's time to point out some of their flaws. <sighs> The UI. The UI is missing some crucial things that would make quality of life so much better. Like maybe having a mini map. I'm sure I'm not the only one who hates hitting the map tab every 15 seconds to check on the positions of your teammates, where the enemies are, what harvesters you have under control. Like it's just annoying. And speaking of harvesters, why isn't there a UI displaying which harvesters you and or your enemies control? It's in the 8v8 mode, but not in the hive mode. And I guess the developers figured since the 8v8 mode centralizes around the harvester as the only objectives, it was more important. But even in the hive mode, maintain control of the harvesters is still incredibly important so why why take it out it takes up so little room ah! the spawning system when you initially load into the game and after every time you die you have to choose a different drop point for you to respawn at if you kind of just space out and forget to choose one it defaults you to the corner of the map that contains only regrets and depression i wish the game kind of expressed a bit more of like shiny light saying you have to choose a location or you're about to be boned and when you're loading in for the first time to drop in i do not see the reason of having more than four drop locations this allows you to have a variety of different strategies but eliminates these pointless options in the back like who, who who drops here it can cause some bad experiences for newer players and it makes veteran players cry every time there's no chat the only way to communicate in this game is a pinging system. And like, it's not terrible, but it's crazy how much of a different game this is when you're in Discord with your team. Solo queue is just a nightmare as you watch your other three teammates mindlessly run around pinging random shiny objects while they hold W into their deaths. They said that they're adding voice chat soon. I mean, so that's a start. I just love that their band-aid fix is adding a notification at the top of the main menu, linking to their Discord exclaiming, hey, games are better with friends. But holy hell, why is there no party chat? Or just a simple way to communicate with your party to tell them, I don't know, be right back or like, hey, do you guys want to talk about stuff? Optimization. This game eats up your GPU like crazy. While streaming and sitting in the main menu of the game, I checked my task manager and noticed that OBS was taking about 25% of my GPU usage and Crucible was at 100. Wait a minute, that doesn't math right. And I found myself having a like 60 FPS mid fight with like a GTX 2080, a good i7 processor, 32 gigs of RAM. I, I, it's just very low if you compare it to other games. Now we'll say this, even at 60 FPS, this game felt kind of smooth. There's like these occasional stutters, but I'll give the game some credit. If I'm playing another game at 60 FPS, it usually feels much worse. And hey, at least it's stressing my GPU to the max while it's struggling to maintain over 60 FPS. Compared to playing something like Valorant, my FPS drops to about 40 and all my hardware is chilling at about 40% usage what what the fuck? map size and movement speed there are times in this game where you feel like you're running for an eternity and with how big the map is i wish they would implement a universal movement system that's sped up during these dull moments like a simple movement boost when you're out of combat and you haven't used an ability for x amount of seconds or maybe like a mount that has like a really long casting time making it impractical to ever use in combat but a nice way to traverse along like the big portions of the map or just shrink the map size down by like 10 or 15 percent something to eliminate these dull moments that i can imagine kills some of the enjoyment of this game at least it does for me and lastly graphics the game's graphics are admittedly a bit stale the colors on the earth are kind of different shades of gray and none of the characters really have the shine in their personality that sticks out and i think that can be a big turnoff for a lot of people but i mean not for me i don't care if everyone's just floating squares shooting smaller sized squares at each other as long as the combat feels fun i'm having a good time but that being said i think it's a valid con to bring up all right so with all that out of the way would i suggest you to play the game yeah even though the number of cons vastly outnumber the pros go for it for starters the game's free i know that's a cheap answer haha <laughs> free is cheap let's get a little bit more specific it's quite different from games currently on the market there's been some of them in the past that play like this but sadly they're mostly dead paragon and gigantic come to mind r.i.p gigantic if you do decide to try out this game i highly encourage you to convince at least one friend to play with you at least until voice comms gets added if you ever want to learn more about the game drop by my stream sometime and i'll drop my mediocre knowledge all up on you and hey, if you like the video and you want to see more, make sure to 
sure to slam that like and subscribe button so you know when my new videos come out and to let YouTube know that this video was okay. And if you think this game is trash, let me know in the comments. Who am I kidding? I'm sure you've already expressed your well-articulated comments of game sucks butt. But as always, remember, don't be a dick. Have a good game. Goodbye. No, but for real, like when you call a number and the voicemail is full and you're like listening to give the explanation and then it's just silent for 10 seconds and then she just comes back at you and says like, goodbye. It's like, bitch.